let's talk about how to get rid of toenail fungus. Okay. Pretty straightforward. There's two main ingredients to this formula, but more importantly, we want to ask questions like why do certain people get toenail fungus yet other people never get it? Why is it so common in diabetics? In fact, in one study, 77 out of 152 diabetics had this condition. Why is it so common with people with Cushing syndrome? That's a condition where you have high levels of cortisol. They're really stressed out. And why are you at risk for getting this condition if you have your spleen removed? So these are all questions we need to ask. And the reason I'm doing this video is I really want you to start to change the way you look at your body, change the way you look at symptoms. Look at symptoms as the indicator light on your car, your engine light, right? You wouldn't just disconnect the wire, right? You would try to find out and diagnose what's really underneath the hood. Unfortunately, in medicine, uh, they don't do that. It's all about just treating the symptom and with medication that has side effects. Of course, we want to treat the symptom with natural things, but we also want to find the cause. So let's talk about this. Like, why would your body develop this white, yellow, uh, black, crusty toenail that is breaking off your nail bed? I mean, that's just weird. It's a condition where it's resistant to medical treatment, okay? Either the topical treatment doesn't work because it doesn't penetrate the nail, or the systemic treatment maybe will work temporarily, but it comes right back and it gives you side effects in the process. Just as a side note, I talked to someone recently who had some foot pain and they go to the doctor and the way the doctor treated it is to give them a steroid, not localized, injected into the foot, but an oral steroid, prednisone, which is going to be systemic. It's going to go through the entire body to get rid of her foot pain. My thought is like, what's going to happen in a few days? It's going to wear off. It's going to come right back. And then what? You take another one and then another one. And then all of a sudden, all the problems that come with it. I mean, it's just, it's just bizarre. But with toenail fungus, just in America, there's like 35 million people who have this. And in the Western part of the world, it's more of a fungus. In the tropical regions, it's more of a mold because it's more moisture and it's more humid. So how do we figure this out? Well, first thing is, okay, we have this fungus, right? What is going on with fungus? in the nail. Well, we can relate it to other things where we have an overgrowth of fungus or candida or a yeast infection in other parts of our body, like whether it's the groin or even the mouth or on your skin. You see a lot of people will get an overgrowth of candida or yeast after an antibiotic because the normal bacteria in their body keep this fungus in check. Okay. So there's always this balance. You know that you have friendly bacteria in your gut and you know you have friendly bacteria on your skin. But did you know you also have friendly fungus on your skin as well and inside your body? You have friendly candida and you have friendly yeast. It's not just about bacteria. The friendly fungus is called mycobiota. Mycobiota describes the different funguses that live on and inside your body that can help you unless the environment changes, they get stressed, and some of them turn pathogenic. So a big part of this has to do with this battle between your own immune system, which by the way, is your friendly microbes. It's also your friendly fungus. That's part of your immune system. It's not a separate thing. And this is why when you lose your immune system with like HIV, for example, or you had your spleen removed, or you had this high level of cortisol and Cushing syndrome, what happens when you have high cortisol? You literally put your immune system into a state of sleep, you paralyze your immune system. So cortisol is a steroid, which basically gets rid of inflammation and it gets rid of symptoms from autoimmune diseases. It, it calms an overreactive immune system because it suppresses the white blood cell. Well, in the process, uh, it gets rid of your defense mechanism against pathogens. So if you have this chronic elevation of cortisol, as in Cushing syndrome, you're more at risk for getting all sorts of um, problems like toenail fungus, like autoimmune problems. And in regard to diabetes, let's talk about that for a second. What is diabetes? It's a situation where you have high levels of sugar. What does fungus, yeast, mold love to eat? That's sugar. Even in the soils with the plants, the plant actually gives that fungus carbohydrates. 
And then the fungus gives the plant root minerals. So it exchanges a carbohydrate for minerals. So fungus love sugar. And of course, the cortisol with the stress, that's another thing. In fact, there's one study that I read that when a person started to balance out their cortisol levels, um, toenail fungus went away, which is interesting. And then what's unique about the HIV is that that is a condition where you basically lose your entire immune system. So all sorts of things can happen. Anytime you want to strengthen your immune system, there's four things to do. Number one, start increasing your vitamin D levels. Okay. Number two, vitamin C, a natural form of vitamin C. And then three, zinc, very important. And number four, fasting. Okay. Start doing regular intermittent fasting and periodic prolonged fasting. That will strengthen your immune system. So I just wanted to get that out. I wanted to talk about some of the things that are underneath the hood of your body so you can start to maybe work with those things. Let's get right to the remedy. There's just two things to focus primarily on. Number one is Epsom salts, and number two is iodine. So with Epsom salts, you just take two tablespoons, mix it with you know three or four cups of water where it's really hot, dissolve it completely, and then you're going to soak your foot in that solution for about 15 minutes, okay, once a day. And what's going to happen is going to start to kill off the fungus. The cool thing is you won't develop resistant to it like medication. I mean, it won't give you any side effects. Okay, so that's number one. And number two, you'll just take a drop of iodine. And the type of iodine I'm going to recommend is either decolorized iodine. Okay, so it doesn't leave a, a yellow stain or the povidone iodine. Just one or two drops right on the toenail and let that seep in, let it dry and do that before you go to bed. And that will actually penetrate because you just soften the nail from the Epsom salts. So right after that, you put the drop on, let it soak in, and iodine is a potent antimicrobial, okay? Without the side effects. So those are the two things to do, but there's other things you can also add that can help. Uh, tea tree oil is antifungal. Um, oregano oil is antifungal. Clove oil is antifungal. And lavender, the essential oil, is a very potent antimicrobial and antifungal. Lavender smells beautiful, but microbes hate it. So you could add really any one of those to help speed the process up if you wanted. Now, since we're on the topic of remedies, there's a really interesting video that sort of relates to this video, um, but it's a little different. It's how to get rid of skin tags. You should check that one out right here.